everybody who pays attention, and that's about 50 percent of the American population who actively seek information and think about what's happening around them. The other 50 percent are zombies. They're lost in cyberspace. They don't give a wit, um, don't pay attention. Some of them aren't smart enough to assimilate information. That's 50 percent of the country. That's a lot of people. But anyway, those of us who are interested in the United States of America, we know things aren't right. The best example, of course, the open border. That is a catastrophe. And day in and day out, President Biden doesn't do anything about it. Oh, it's the Republicans' fault for not passing a bill. The bill is terrible. Okay, if it were good, I would be waving that flag. It's not. I wouldn't vote for it if I were a senator or a congressperson. Biden does not want to close the border. Puts all of us in danger. And then in the big cities, I'm about 20 miles outside of New York City, outside of Manhattan, about 10 miles outside of Queens. Nobody's safe. And I mean nobody. The criminals are running wild all over the city because the progressive politicians control New York state and city will not enforce the law. And that is a subject again, and I'm sorry to be redundant here, but this is outrageous what I'm about to tell you. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. So listen to this. I'm going to go through it slowly. On March 27th, all right, last week, the NYPD answered a call in the Bronx, New York. They went to a house. The house was occupied by eight squatters, adults, and a couple of children. Okay? The squatters were illegal aliens, or are illegal aliens. They came up from the border. They saw this dwelling in the Bronx that nobody lived in. They moved in. Almost immediately, they opened a cocaine store. They sold cocaine. And if you're going to do that in the Bronx or the tough neighborhoods, you've got to have guns. And they had a slew of the guns. They had handguns. They had automatic guns. They had all that. This is illegal aliens now. The cops go. They arrest eight of them. Okay. Three of them, four of them. I want to get this right. Four of them appear before a judge named Eugene Bowen. He is notorious for being the softest judge on crime in New York City, and that's going something. This guy doesn't want to put anyone away. So what does he do? He releases three out of four illegal aliens who had cocaine and guns. No bail. That alone should get the man impeached. He only started to be a judge in Bronx in January. And he's already created mass chaos, this guy. But who's going to impeach him? Not the progressives. All right, so now you got three guys who are violent guys out on the streets. One of them um, is a particularly egregious person, Hector de Sousa Vilata, all right, 24 years old. He shot a guy. He was arrested for shooting a guy in the leg. All right. And the guy was so scared he wouldn't testify against Hector. So they dropped the charges. But the judge knew that Hector had shot a guy. All right. And the only reason the case wouldn't go forward is because the, the wounded guy was too terrified to testify. But he knew that. He lets Hector out anyway. So Hector's picture gets on the front page of the New York Post. Good job, New York Post. And ICE shows up and takes Hector and the two other guys into custody. Okay, they're going to be deported. No thanks to Judge Eugene Bowen, who would have them race around the city doing whatever they wanted to do, when they shouldn't even be in the country. New York City is a sanctuary city. New York didn't contact Homeland Security ICE. No, they had to see it in the paper and they showed up and grabbed these guys. OK, so last night I'm on News Nation discussing this case. Roll it. There is a judge in the Bronx. His name is Eugene Bowen. Mm -hmm. Every prosecutor in the borough of the Bronx doesn't want to appear before him. He's the most lenient judge in New York City. He simply will not enforce the law. 
He believes that the justice system in New York state is corrupt and bigoted against African-Americans. He himself is African-American. So when these six criminal migrants are brought uh, by the prosecutors in front of him, prosecutors knew that this guy was going to let all of them out. They were wrong. He actually kept two in. But one of the guys that he let out is Hector de Sousa Villarata, okay, who was arrested with a nine millimeter pistol. Of course, the case not adjudicated in New York because they don't care. So Judge Bowen let Hector out. No bail. Even though Hector had been arrested, shouldn't be here in the first place. On and on and on and on. Now, I submit to you, it does not get any worse than this. When you have prosecutors who don't want to prosecute. Remember, in New York City, 80 percent of the arrests the NYPD make. Let me get this earpiece in here. I'm sorry about this. 80% are not prosecuted to the full extent of the law. I mean, eight out of 10. And that doesn't count the ones that the prosecutors just say, ah, I'm not going to do it. Goodbye. It's dismissed. 80%. Okay. And then when they finally do prosecute, they go in front of guys like Judge Bowen and say, ah, yeah, I don't really care. No, no, even if he's found guilty, I'm not going to give him, I'll give him a suspended sentence. Even if he's here illegally, I'm not turning him over to ICE. This is anarchy. I mean, there's no two sides to the story. This is anarchy and puts all of us in danger. So there's another judge, too, that my staff came up with. His name is Lawrence Bushing. So Lawrence Bushing, almost identical, lets a guy named Yadira Arroyo in the Bronx, out on March 16th to, without any bail. And um, I'm sorry, Yadira Arroyo is the dead person, all right? She's dead, murdered by Jose Gonzalez, who Judge Bushing let out of prison on no bail. This happens time and time and time again. It happened for Detective Diller. We went over that. Okay, so this is not unusual. This happens all the time. And the result is that if you live in New York City or New York State, they're in danger. Roll the tape. Anybody watching us tonight worldwide, if you don't know that the state of New York's justice system has collapsed entirely, you don't want to know. You're lying to yourself. This is beyond disgraceful. This is so dangerous. There is not one resident in this state where we both are tonight who is safe. Not one. And then it goes down from the governor to the mayor to the judges. And believe me, this Bowen's the worst of them. But there are scores of these judges. So we in New York have a choice. We can leave and hundreds of thousands of citizens are leaving. But they are. Or... We can be so cautious, and, you, and I, I tell, my daughter lives in Manhattan, all right? I pick up, I said, do not go on that subway. Do not do that. She's a young woman. I will pick up all the ground transportation because that's how dangerous this is. I know New York City as well as any human being on this planet. I've never seen it, even in the crack war days of the 90s, it wasn't like this. Because in the crack war days, if they caught you, if the police caught you, you went upstate. You went to prison. Now, drug dealers in New York City can sell heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, methamphetamine, anything they want. They're not prosecuted. It's a victimless crime. You know who started that? Barack Obama started that. That's oh, victimless. No. You're selling poison. You're killing people. This progressive mindset is destroying the fabric of the United States. And the only solution is for the voters to throw the bums out. Now, are they going to do that in the Bronx? I don't think so. But surely everybody in that borough knows that they're in personal danger. They're poor. Most people who live in the Bronx. They're poor. They can't hire cars to protect them or anything. They have to take the subway. And that's a memo. What a, I never thought... In a million years, I would see this. 
And this all goes back to this progressive movement whose standard bearer, leader, is Joe Biden. Do you ever hear him speak out against this crime and chaos or sanctuary cities? Never. If this guy wins in November, I guess we're all going to go to Ireland, right? I don't know. As you know, Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. His famous Giza Dream Sheets are the best sheets you will ever sleep on. For a limited time, get a queen size set for $59.98, king size just $69.98. These are the lowest prices in My Pillow's history. Mike and My Pillow employees continue to be canceled by some big box stores and attacked by the media. They appreciate your great support during these times and want to thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. So please go to MyPillow.com or call 800-869-0298. Use promo code Bill. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets at the lowest prices, so call 800-869-0298. Or go to MyPillow.com, promo code Bill, to get free shipping today. RFK Jr. announces vice presidential selection woman named Nicole Shanahan, 38 years old, uh, one of the wealthiest women in the country because she was married at one time to the co-founder of Google um, and got a lot of money in the separation. Uh, She describes herself as a left-wing progressive, and that's perfect for RFK. Roll the tape. The Fed works for Wall Street and allows millionaire bankers to prey upon, upon Main Street and the American worker. And that's why Nicole and I both left the Democratic Party. Our values didn't change, but the Democratic Party did. Okay, so RFK is running to the left of the Democratic Party, which is his right to do, if you want to. He has one sliver connection to the right in America, and that's the anti-vax stuff. There are conservatives who uh, don't like vaccinations and all of that. Okay, so uh, how many states do you think RFK Jr. is on the ballot right now? How many do you think? The number is four. New Hampshire, Nevada, Utah, and Hawaii. Now, Nevada is a swing state. Utah will go for Trump. Hawaii will go for Biden. New Hampshire doesn't like Trump very much, but it's in play. Now, in order to get on the other 46 state ballots, RFK Jr. had to appoint a vice president. That's one of the criteria. In each state is different. So you, this costs an enormous amount of money, and I'm sure Ms. Shanahan is going to be kicking a lot of money into RFK's campaign. You've got to go through the procedures in each state to get on the ballot, and each state is different. So only four have taken RFK now. I don't know how many he's going to get on. And the Democrats can try to block that. Because according to all the polls, RFK is taking more votes away from Biden than he is from Trump. It's about two, three to one. The Democrats don't want him at all. In fact, RFK Jr.'s own family doesn't want him. When you say you see your brother's campaign as a danger, is it more about siphoning votes away from Joe Biden or is it because of his policies? It's really about siphoning votes from Biden. You know, the, the polls I'm seeing, um, Bobby takes 70 percent of the votes from Biden and 30 percent from Trump. And I feel strongly that this is the most important election of our lifetime. Okay, Um, now we go to Fairfax County, Virginia, just south of the District of Columbia. So on Easter Sunday, the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, there are nine of them, uh, 10 of them, nine Democrats, one Republicans, have unanimously voted to celebrate Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter Sunday. Now, the excuse is, well, March 31st is transgender day of visibility all over the world. So we have now you can do it Monday or Saturday. 
This is right in your face, right in your face to all Christians. That's what this is. Fairfax County, Virginia. Church attendance, according to uh, Gallup poll, on the decline still. Um, they uh, surveyed 32,445 adults. That's a lot of survey. And the question, um, these are people who attend religious services weekly. Okay. 2013, 38% for all U.S. adults. 2023, 10 years later, 30%. Christians, that's Protestants. 213, 49, 223, 44. Catholics, 213, 40, 223, 33%. So you can see that weekly attendance at church, sinking, sinking, sinking. Okay. Smart life. Is being religious, believing in God, a positive for your life? There is a study out of Great Britain, the Institute for the Impact of Faith in Life. Now, this is a pro-religious group. You should know that. Here's what they found out. 76% of religiously affiliated people say they were happy. 52% of atheists say they are happy. Big goal. So you're happier if you believe in religion, according to this study. 76% of the religiously affiliated felt confident in dealing with life's challenges. 56% of atheists. 74% of religious people say they have a high degree of self-control. 51 of atheists do. And finally, 42% of atheists were optimistic about the future. Um, 69% of religious people are optimistic about the future. Maybe that's because of heaven, right? Going to heaven. So, you know, look, if you are a religious person, religious gives solace because you believe that there is justice in the universe and good people will be rewarded and bad people will be punished. And psychologically, that is a very strong emotional quotient. Okay, that. You want to break it down. Sorting through your expense tracking, estimated payments, and all those tax deductions can be overwhelming. It might even lead to a failure to file and failure to pay penalties that pile up on your tax debt. The attorneys at Tax Network USA have been lifesavers for many. Their team has successfully saved clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you're in the hole for $10,000 or starting at a $10 million debt, they are ready to help you. The expert attorneys and tax professionals at Tax Network USA are equipped to secure the best settlement for you and help you resolve all tax cases. So please go to TNUSA.com slash bill, or you can call 1-800-245-6000. These tax debt relief programs are expected to change, so get to them now. Visit TNUSA.com slash bill or call 800-245-6000. Tell them O'Reilly sent you. As another critical election nears, America is gripped by anxiety. Recent studies show that 56% are feeling dread about the upcoming presidential vote in November. That's why I stand with AMAC. It's more than a senior discount organization. AMAC fights for common sense and a return to traditional American values. Visit amac.us slash O'Reilly to grab an exclusive election year special. A four-year AMAC membership for just $30. Members get access to money-saving benefits, the AMAC magazine, free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots. Take advantage of this election year special. Four years for just $30. Be a part of the solution. By joining AMAC, you strengthen a movement dedicated to preserving our cherished principles. Please join now at amac.us slash O'Reilly. That's amac.us slash O'Reilly. Okay, so here's the final thought of the day. Uh, the mug self-reliance 
in order to have self-reliance, you have to have two things, discipline and self-awareness. So if you make a mistake, you got to own up. Now, a lot of people won't do that in our narcissistic age. You know them. Never admit a mistake, ever. No matter what, no, much have, no matter how much evidence there is, will not. And then when they're caught, they make excuses. Well, so-and-so did something worse, or uh, I was under the influence of LSD. I mean, you know, excuses, you know, rationalizations. So anyway, I'm walking into uh, a diner and have breakfast this morning. And the door opens, there's a little stairs like this, and a family comes out. So there's three kids, mom and a dad, typical American family. Well, the kids wham down the stairs, on the stairs already, okay, almost knocking me over. I'm a big guy, so I, I wasn't in any peril, but they're like, like this. And it was like, what are you doing blocking my way? Now, they were younger. So I didn't say anything, but I expected the parents to say something. No. <laughs> so I kind of look at the father like this. He looks away. He knew. Awareness. Now, to, you can't expect the kids to be aware of anything unless you teach them to be aware. So, for example, when an elevator door opens, you let the people inside the elevator get off first. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, but how many times have you seen people go in while there were people in the elevator? When there is an elderly senior citizen going up against the door and you're right there, you open the door. I open the door for everybody. If I'm in a position and there's a bunch of people, I just yank the door open and everybody goes in. Okay? Because I'm aware that that gets people moving quicker than everybody having to close and open, close and open. This is called self-awareness. But you also have to be aware of other people and their feelings. So you can hurt people's feelings and you don't even know about it, right? But you can, you can read it if you care. And that's the key. So if you care about yourself, you want to be operating at the highest level. That's self-reliance. If you're dependent on anybody, that's not the highest level and you're going to get hosed, 90% chance if you are dependent upon another person or the government, you will get hosed. And I mean bad. If you're dependent on yourself and you protect yourself and build, you know, protective measures like a nice bank account, things like that, you're going to be far better off. But in order to do that, you've got to be aware. How many of you have elderly parents that are broke? I had to support my mother for 15 years, and I was happy to do it. I'm of the Japanese philosophy, where the elders are venerated. That's my philosophy. I was happy to support my mother. Kept her in the home. Whatever she needed, it was there. At the end, 24-hour care in the home. I didn't have to put her in a facility. But I knew that I would have to budget for that years before because I wasn't always thinking about myself. I was thinking about awareness. It was awareness of my life, my situation, others around me. There's a key. And you know what the shame of it is in America? It's not taught anymore. It's all immediate gratification where me, 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 my, 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 you know, I got to have this, I got to have that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to save. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to deprive myself, I'm going to, nah, 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 nah. man, you're going to get it. And, you know, your parents, your elderly parents or whatever, you, you got to think. So anyway, this is a lecture. It's Holy Week. And I decided to do it. Um, awareness, very important to self-reliance, very important to your life. If you start now, then you'll see a big turnaround fast. Thank you for watching and listening to The No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching The No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.